All right guys, so it's been almost four years since the Sony a7 III came out and we finally have the a7 IV now. I've been using the a7S III since it first came out a while back and honestly, I've loved that camera. But when it comes to taking pictures and vlogging and pretty much a one and done camera, I feel like this is gonna be the go-to for pretty much any creator out there, especially at this price point. It's been almost four years and I figured I've had this camera for a month now. It's time to give you guys my honest review and what better way to do it than in sunny Miami Beach, Florida. Now it is $500 more than the a7 III, but does sport a much higher resolution, 33 megapixel sensor, and an updated super powerful autofocus system that is extremely accurate. Now a lot of things that we asked for, Sony gave us with this camera. It has the same nice grip that you got with the a7S III and the A1, which does make it about 50 grams heavier, which is slightly noticeable, especially if you're vlogging all day with it. Unlike the A1 though, thankfully the flip out screen with the a7 IV fully articulates and tilts whether you'd like to get a better idea of where you're at in your vlogs, or if you need to snag some six shots when you're low to the ground. This camera finally fills that void that we got with the Sony a7S III. I mean, with 12 megapixels, you really can't use that camera for taking photos, especially if you had to like crop in and stuff like that. But it was great for videography, and it was one of my favorite cameras that I've ever owned. Now, having this Sony a7 IV, it's a happy medium between both. We have videography with high quality, as well as a 33 megapixel sensor for pictures, being able to crop in and stuff. Having just one camera to take around with you makes all the difference, especially if you just need to bring maybe one or two lenses with you. As far as controls go, super similar to the rest of the lineup, except now we do have that record button moved from the back of the camera to the top, which just makes everything feel much better in pretty much any scenario. The dials feel great and they lock into place when you're shifting between different modes. And we now have probably the best menu system I've ever used when it comes to cameras. For me personally, it's so much easier to navigate in comparison to other manufacturers out there. Simplicity goes a long way when you're in a pinch and I just feel like it's much better organized than before. Like the A7S III, we have a dual card slot system that supports one CF Express Type A card, which are quite expensive, but much faster. And we also have your normal UHS Type II SD cards. For ports, we have everything you pretty much see on the A7S III. A full-size HDMI port, thank you. USB Type-C that can power the camera when you're using it, making it perfect for streaming. And it can also close its mechanical shutter when the camera's turned off, so you won't have to worry about catching up any dust when swapping lenses. Now performance is where this camera really takes a step up. Now obviously we have a 33 megapixel sensor with this new Sony a7 IV, which takes super sharp photos. It's not as powerful as the 50 megapixel Sony a1 that shoots at 30 FPS, but this camera is almost a third of the price of the Sony a1, so that's something to keep in mind. Not to mention we have an improved in-body stabilization with over a half stop in comparison to the Sony a7 III. 4K recording now in 60 FPS that does have a crop, and it's probably only one of the real downsides for those that do depend on it. However, this 4K recording is downsampled from a 7K sensor, which looks absolutely amazing. But let's talk about photos first. Coming from the Sony a7S III, which was my go-to since it launched, I can say with confidence that the autofocus you get with this camera is just next level. Even if you're just recording or taking photos of yourself with Sony's imaging app, one massive upgrade is now you can spot focus in the app itself, which is huge if you have no one else with you. And even if you forget, the autofocus system pretty much captures you each and every single time, which is absolutely fantastic. Unlike the a7 III, the face, eye, and body tracking works in every focus mode for birds, animals, and people. Unless you turn it off in these settings, it will automatically pick up the subject's eyes, face, and or body, even if they turn around. All you have to do is touch the subject you want to track, and the camera will take it from there. The autofocus is amazing, but what's also impressive is how the camera handles different lighting scenarios with exposure a lot better than before. Now obviously having a 33 megapixel sensor will give us super sharp photos, but the downside to that would be smaller pixels, right? Which will make the Sony a7 IV not that good when it comes to taking photos and videos in lower light scenarios such as at nighttime. But that's just not the case. This camera is just as good as the a7S III, if not better, in certain scenarios when taking photos and shooting videos. I'd even go as far as saying this camera is better than the a7S III in low light. Images are super clean and crisp up until we hit about the 12,800 mark on the ISO. Noise is probably the lowest I've ever seen at that mark. And if you have a good eye for it and are somewhat good at editing, you can save photos that are bumped up to almost double that range. Color science sees an improvement and it's noticeable right out of the gate when you turn this camera on for the first time. 14 bit raw images give you up to 13 stops of dynamic range, which helps give you a ton of freedom when it comes to playing with shadows and highlights. Video is what we'll cover next, 4K and 30fps downsampled from 7K, now with the flip out screen and amazing color science. 422 10-bit in S-Log3, 4K 60fps with a crop, and if you want 120 you're gonna have to bump down to 1080p which again, still looks good if you pair it with the right lens. 
The eye autofocus that you get with photos also carries over into shooting videos. Same as photos, you can tap a subject to track it and then we'll automatically switch to eye and face tracking as it's needed. Speaking of focus, now we have this dope feature called lens breathing compensation, which has been a nightmare with certain lenses like the 24 and 35 millimeter G Master lines. At low apertures when you're close to subjects, you get this breathing when you're pulling focus or moving between objects. This feature adds a slight digital zoom that counteracts any change in focal length when focusing on a new subject, something only available on the Sony a7 IV with those higher end lenses. Stabilization test is up next, and I wanted to cover this for you guys to see how it stacks up against the Sony A1. It's almost as good in certain scenarios. And I'm also gonna stack it up against my iPhone 13 Pro so we can get an idea of how far along phones have come over the past few years. Here we have the active stabilization on standard. It's a little bit smoother. There's definitely a noticeable difference. And here we have the active stabilization turned on. Now this is as good as it gets pretty much, along with depending on whatever lens you're using. But as you guys will notice, there is a 10% crop, I believe, if you use the active image stabilization with this camera. So just make sure you guys use a wider lens. Right now I'm using a 20 millimeter f1.8 sony g lens and it's perfect i mean if you guys want throw it on a switch pod instead of this manfrotto tripod that i'm using give you a little bit more in terms of width but this is the active image stabilization on the sony a7 IV. It does work super well in all modes, 4K 60 when cropped and both 30p modes. However, when shooting in 30p, you get this pretty nasty rolling shutter with the full width sensor. My advice would be to use a much wider lens if that's your necessary frame rate and shoot with the active stabilization turned on. And the results are some of the best you'll see out in today's market. Now, something else that you guys might be wondering about is how does the remote shooting work with the Sony a7 IV? Well, in the past, what I would do is use the Sony remote to take photos and videos of myself whenever I was traveling. Since I love traveling, I like meeting friends and family where I go and not depending on anyone, being able to take photos of yourself was always a real big pain. Now, that remote does not work with the Sony a7 IV, but it did work really well with my other cameras. What does work now a lot better than before is the Sony Imaging Edge mobile app. Now, when I would use this app before with the Sony a7 III was absolutely terrible. There were so many bugs, and I'd only be in focus maybe 10% of the time on my photos. Now, I don't have those issues anymore, and it works very well. You can now almost fully control the camera from the app, even set focus tracking so it follows you around if you're shooting alone, which, like I mentioned, was a nightmare with the Sony a7 III. I could never grab photos of myself traveling before. I'm glad to say those days are now long gone, and the app works absolutely amazing. The a7 IV gives us all the improvements we needed to take our content creation to the next level. Resolution improvements, a flip out screen, much better autofocus tracking and color science, as well as a ton of other smaller improvements. Now the only thing that might be a downside with this camera is that rolling shutter which you can easily fix using a wider lens and active stabilization or that 4K 60 crop. For some creators that might make a difference. For me, you guys know it doesn't really affect me that much since most of my videos are shot in the studio, in the game room, I'm in a stationary setting, I shoot in 4K 30 so it doesn't really affect me that much. I'm doing tech reviews, gaming, I'm streaming and stuff like that and I also love traveling. So this makes this the perfect camera for me for photos and videos, which is why it's going to be my go-to on the channel here moving forward alongside the Sony a7S III. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Sony a7 IV, where you'll also find links to everything that we covered in today's video. If you want to see more, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.